Well, hello. God bless you. God keep you. God may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. I gave him a little change today. <laughs> well, thank God the bills are paid. So, um, uh, was tossing, turning, worrying, thinking, thinking, and uh, I don't know, God. Uh, I love, like David said, sometimes we have to encourage ourselves, which he did. He encouraged himself after the death of his child. And uh, I have to, uh, I constantly uh, encourage myself. Uh, it was a low morning, but thank God uh, uh, I feel much better. Uh, my prayers go out to the family. Uh, the family and the uh, the victims of this mass shooting, my Lord, is, um, uh, to the mass shooting in uh, Las Vegas. I mean, it's it's strange how it came about, but the devil's always busy. He always has uh, uh, people that he could use to do his dirty work. Um, uh, there's a lot that's been said on the media about it and about him, but. Mm. Mm. I'm not going to comment on a lot of that, but uh, it's a sad day. Uh, uh, nah, it's a lot of politics, but banning guns is not going to stop a person that wants to kill multiple people. I mean, I will say that, you know. Uh, some people in his family are probably victims too because they have to suffer from the aftermath of what that person did. But, uh, you know, uh, mm. we always trying to fix something. You know, uh, he had some type of issues going on. And... Like I say all the time, when you're going through something, you need to open your mouth. If you're depressed, you feel suicidal, you feel like harming other people and taking people's lives besides your own, please verbalize it. Please go to someone and talk to them. We have therapists. We have psychiatrists. We have priests. We have preachers. There are somebody that you, you should have been able to talk to or people should be able to talk to. You know, if you got tired, that's why I tell people, baby, you better talk to yourself, uh, you know. Like I said, I'm not making light of the death, but I'm like realistically, sometimes you got to talk to yourself because I'm quite sure he needed a self-talking where he should have said to himself, look, I might want to kill myself. I don't need to take all these people with me. I don't need to take all these people with me, you know. So, I mean, just to shoot randomly in a crowd, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't just affect those people. It affects everybody as a whole. Because now you have a lot of people that are afraid, especially children, to want to get together. But, like I said, what I wasn't going to say, I'm going to say. That's the tool of the devil. That's what I was talking about. You know, not in that situation of a concert, but I'm talking about bringing people together. And I'm not talking about the issue of that, but I'm talking about black people getting together. And when we're trying to get together, like the issue of us speaking up for our rights, and speaking against injustice and bringing us together, there's always something to separate us. You know, you can read into that how you want to. I hope spiritually you read into it. But, uh, like I said, uh, I had to encourage myself. It's like every time I look around, you know, I'm dealing with this rent issue. You know, and thank God that's taken care of. How I got to figure out, because I'm always on the edge of my seat trying to figure out, like, oh my God, and, you know, <laughs> what's going to happen with that situation. And in my mind, you know, I'm thinking, like, I got plan A, B, and C. And I'm like, so far, I don't think those plans are going to work. Because, guys, every time I have a plan, God seems to knock it out. And uh, it's, it's strange when you're not in control of your own life. And uh, only uh, certain people can understand that. Trying to do things God's way. I don't try to do things God's way. Uh, Lord have mercy. I didn't know I was going to say all this. I was just going to tell you the praise report. But it seemed like I started talking, then Ew, things take over. Woo, Lord Jesus. Um, mm. 
uh, like I said, my spirits was a little low today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, I'm trying to figure out this rent situation, the job situation. I, I'm still stuck. <laughs> you know, I'm still, I can't help it. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm human. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what did I do wrong? You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want you touching me. I don't want you up on me. I don't want you in my face. I don't want you to keep picking with me. But I get fired and I lose my medical benefits. So I don't have medical benefits and I need to go to the doctor. Hmm. Okay. Oh, Lord. I didn't know I put it out there. Because I don't like putting out my business out there. And I'm quite sure other people don't. But just like I'm telling you to do it, I need to do it myself. So, anyway, I'm not asking for help and all that type of thing unless you really want help. <laughs> Encouraging myself. But, like I said, you know, people go through things. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying and justifying his actions, but I'm saying people go through things and you keep pushing people against the wall and people break. A man is a very fragile thing, you know. And uh, like I said, I don't want to analyze anybody, but the dude has some issues, you know. And the media and the police is not going to tell you everything. But believe me, he has some issues. He's, he has something going on. He has something going on. He has some pressures, some internal pressures that was going on, and uh, he didn't know how to verbalize. That's why he was shooting. Uh, there's some deep things with that. But, uh, you know, when he's shooting, he's shooting out emotions. He's shooting out frustration. Oh, let me stop. But that's what that was. That, that's what that was. I didn't have any involvement with the man. Don't nobody get that twisted real quick, because I know some of you crazy. No, I don't know the man. I'm just telling you. Spiritually, spiritually, yeah, it was some things going on, and uh, like I said with me, you know, you're sitting on the edge, and you're worrying about this, you know, is this going to get paid? He's 68-something years old. I'm getting older. You know, people in society, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you have people out here that have worked 20 and 30 years. Some people were forced into early retirement. You have some people that are in retirement but had to come out of retirement to work so they could pay their bills. Because owning a home, owning a car, eating every day is a job. Mm. Lord have mercy, you know. And uh, trying to survive. When you're trying to survive, you know, I, I can imagine. You know, right now, I'm, a, I'm up under God's thumb, believe me, and that's difficult because some things I want to do, I can't do. Believe that. It's some things I want to do, not shoot nobody. <laughs> you know, I'm like, take a sip <laughs> and take a trip, you know. Like I said before, you know, uh, oh, Lord Jesus, you know, thank God right now, which is a miracle, the car's working. But then I look at it, the guy that worked on the car, I'm looking like, I'm trying to look at the paycheck that I had earned. And I'm looking at the money because I know I hold myself accountable for the money that I spend. You know, and I did my tithing, and I could have did better with my tithing, but then here was a bill. Dude charged me 300 and something dollars. I guess I only paid him 300, 200 the first time to fix my car. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, yeah, I might be venting, but I'm just telling you how it is. I'm just telling you about me right now. And, and about people and their frustrations and people going through things and people not verbalizing. And I'm verbalizing just to show and tell rather than sit back and talk some stuff and not walk it. So, like I said, I was dealing with the car. So, I'm looking at my paycheck. 300 some dollars went there. Then I had to get gas. Then I had to get oil. Then I had to get some other uh, part. Then I had bought some battery. Then I had to take the battery back because I found out I didn't need a battery. Then I needed something else. Just all these little looks. And then I paid another dude. Found out when the one mechanic said something was wrong with my car. It wasn't. Turned around. That caused me to miss two days of work. That. And I'm in pain. And that I'm frustrated dealing with a dude that's sexually harassing me on a job. All these things was going on. So, Lord, walking in fear. Walking in temptation. Walking. But still walking. You know what I'm saying? Lord, Jesus, Lord. You know. Then I look at it, and I'm paying him all that money. But God don't like ugly. What goes around comes around. When you use people and you do wrong to people, now the dude, the first dude who worked out my car that said that it was, uh, uh, my whole wheels was going to fall off, had me pay the money for a part. All of this type of stuff. They told me I needed another expensive part. 
Not to mention, oh, let me back up, pay for the fuel pump. Most of my paycheck is what I ended up looking at went to this car right here that I have, which is driving me. I'd rather be uh, driving than, you know what I'm saying, than right now doing the toy thing. I thank God. Don't get it twisted. I, I'm, I'm grateful But at the cost. But that first mechanic that did that, now somebody broke in his truck. I didn't do it. I did not do it. And I didn't have anybody do it. But somebody broke in his truck. He knows who did it. Some, uh, he said he does, but somebody broke in his truck, tore his gear up. First he was driving, now he's not driving. Now he's damn. The mechanic can't fix his car. <laughs> Physician heal thyself, okay? Yeah. But uh, like I said, you take advantage of people to come back on you. Come back on you. Come back on you double fold many times. Yeah. And stop him from calling and trying to apologize all them times. Yeah, apologize. <laughs> My dear said apologize. <laughs> but, uh. Anyway, you know, he was cool. And like I said, I mended the fence. He mended the fence. We was cool. But, yeah, somebody got him. Got into his car and tore it up. And then he's not driving. Um, the word got back to me. <laughs> but, uh, like I said, people are you know, dealing with issues of frustration. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with life. You know, everyday life. Life coming at you. Not even stopping, just coming at you. You know what I'm saying? And you can't stop it. You know, it would be a powerful thing if we could sit back and say, look, light, stop. Stop all those bullets coming out of that, out of that hotel room. Stop that man's man. Stop the violence. You know, stop the killing. Bring back those people that he killed. But we in the real world. We're not in animation. We're not in cartoon land. We in real land. And these are the things that happen. And then we sit back after it happened and we're talking about how can we stop this. We got to pray. We got to pray, you know, we got to pray, we got to pray to God. It's not about stopping nothing and, you know, everybody doing all that talking. Y'all been banning guns, y'all been this, when they did the 88 minutes, what was it? When dudes robbed that bank and they had to uh, fight off a uh, uh, machine gun. You got people foreign us, whatever the real terrorist, which he's a terrorist, that's terrorist act, that's the definition of a terrorist act, uh, uh, a violent act of murder against uh, 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 citizens. So, I mean, hey. You know what I'm saying? They had that. And still, to this day, people are still getting assault rifles. People are making assault rifles. People make bombs. You know what I'm saying? And they kill it. So how are you going to prevent that? You can't prevent people, a murderer. You can't prevent that. You know what I'm saying? You can talk about it. You can pray about it. To me, that's the main thing that can prevent it. It's going to always be death. We're not going to get out of this world alive. I was always going to be death. There's going to be murder. There's going to be violence. You know, from our races, our people, different nationalities, different it's going to be violence. It's going to be violence. Like I said, all we can do is pray. We can just pray. And remember, but for the grace of God, you know what I'm saying? Hug your family. Go, go kiss your family. Call some of your loved ones up. And thank God for them that they're safe. You know, and if you have someone around you that you think might feel like they want to take somebody else's life or want to take their own life, try to get with them, you know. I don't know. You know, I took my little fake nails off. Uh, I got to start a new job, you know. You know what I'm saying? Just keep moving. You just keep moving. And, uh... You just play the cards, you know, the voices. Just, you just play the cards that's dealt to you. You know what I'm saying? With me, like I said, uh, I am not my own, you know. You know. Uh, <laughs> it is, uh, I'm a wayward, so, wayward soldier, you know what I'm saying? I, I just keep moving, you know what I'm saying? I just keep moving. And trying to find happiness and trying, trying to stay, stay focused, you know. To pass the sermon, stay focused. But sometimes it's difficult. I mean, it's not sometimes. Oftentimes it's difficult to stay focused when you don't have a lot of positive people around you that can feed you. You know, everybody can't feed me and everybody can't be my friend. And everybody can't tell me or lead and guide me in the direction I need to go. Um, like I said, um, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I just keep showing up and um, just pray that God sends some more daylight and sunlight my way. 
And I'm not talking about money and I'm not talking about material things. Sometimes I just want that peace within. I don't know about you, but I just want that peace within. You know, uh, like I said, uh, I'm a recovering alcoholic. This thing next door to me, this neighbor from hell, she messes with my sobriety. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I allow her to, you know, but staying sober and staying focused. <laughs> Stand sober, stand focused, stay keeping your rent up, trying to make your car payments and all of this stuff like that. When you get fired and you don't have no medical and then you get penalized when you don't have medical and all these things are hanging over your head. But you got to get up and supposed to put a smile on your face and you're supposed to be the shoulder, the soldier and put on all the arm of God and you're supposed to get out here and you keep going. Whoa. Yeah. Man up. Man up. That's what I was telling my little grandson. <laughs> I had him over here, little here's a cat. I had him over here the other day. I babysat him. And uh, he was doing something. And I said, boy, stop. I said, man up, man up. He said, man up, man up. <laughs> I said, little soldier in the making. Oh, my God. Just powerful. Just powerful. Just little treasures. Just just want them to see a see a better world, a, a better society than than what I've seen. I don't want them to ever experience the things that I've experienced. Mm. I don't want them to the the boys, the males that I have in my family, uh, my grandkids and my little cousins, because I have a lot of male cousins, you know, and male relatives. But I don't ever want them to ever let anyone make them feel less than a man. You know, ever. I don't want them to ever, ever feel less than a man. And I don't want them ever, ever in their life to think that they need a person uh, uh, to bow down to anybody, to bow down to a white person, any other ethnic group, anybody. I don't want them to ever feel that they have to bow down. I don't want them to ever feel that they have to have someone tell them that they're a man. I don't ever want them to to be treated less than a man. I want them to always hold their heads up high and always be able to look the world in the eye and any man or woman, no matter what color they are, I want them to be able to look them in the eye and say whatever they think and they feel. Whatever they think and feel. I don't want them to have any hesitation. Well, if I say this, this is going to happen. If I say that, I want them to be straight up men. That's what, that's my hope and my prayer. That's my prayer for all of them. To be a proud black man. And to know who you are. And to know from whence you came. To never hold your head down. Ever in your life. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. You know. Um, I have a, a cousin. And uh. I call him Chris, I call him Messiah, it's, uh, I guess his rap name, and uh, uh, I put some of his uh, rap uh, on the, I uploaded some of them from YouTube on my page, and uh, it's one talking about our time, I think it's called our time or something like that, you know what I'm saying, you know, and, uh, and it's powerful because, you know, it's our time. You know, it's always been our time, but we really need to come into black people standing up and speaking out. You know, if you're hurting and you don't like where you are and you don't like what you're going through and you don't like the way the things are on your job, you've been demoted and the newcomer has been promoted. <laughs> uh, you know, you've been uh, bending over backwards on your job and, 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 and you still haven't been... Uh, 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 compensated, you're not getting any raises, everybody else is getting raises and you're not, you know, speak up about it, write to somebody. I, uh, when we join together and we, we vocalize, you know what I'm saying, we can make changes, we can make changes.
um, it's so funny. Uh, I just can't tell it out. But um, like I said, my life started out one way, and things I was saying, and now I was here, and then I, I keep thinking, you know, well, this situation happened, and you know, you know, I don't know where does this come from. Uh, anyway. You know, I was on one thing. I thought God had me in one direction. Now he has me in another. And I feel like Jonah a little bit because uh, Reverend Charles Stanley, some kind of way, you know, they talk about, like, uh, I signed up for, like, Bible tools or Bible study tools or something. And uh, in the, anyway, in there, he had mailed out this sermon. He said, do you have the, uh, he's asking the question, are you suffering from the Jonah syndrome? And I'm like, mm, you know, so I glance over because I like to read, but I hate when they put a whole lot of writing online because the words I love. I need to get me some glasses. I'm trying to figure that out too. I broke my glasses, uh, my rigid good pair. And uh, he's talking about that. And uh, I'm like, uh, I thought they were saying two hours. <laughs> I'm like, um, I was like, no at first, but then I thought about it, you know what I'm saying, and my spirit is like, yeah, I ain't no suffering from Jonah syndrome, because Jonah was told to go do what, with Tyrus, he was told to go one place, and he was like, nah, I don't want to go, because I know you're going to forgive them, and in a way, to be honest with y'all, and to be transparent, I do be feeling that way, because it's like, I want, I'm somewhere in me, you know, God's telling me to speak to the black people, <laughs> I'm black, to speak to us, you know, and encourage us, but then it's like, in my heart, for real, for real, I'm thinking like it's not gonna matter. Don't nobody's listening to me. Don't nobody want to hear nothing about that. That stuff being said years and years. Black power, throwing up fists, making fists. People with the afros and people go through their thing, and people continue to still go through the same thing. They continue to still endure racism and not speak up about it and not get together and and, and fight it and fight oppression. So why should I keep opening my mouth? So I'm just being transparent. I do be feeling that. And it was funny that he said it because I didn't have a name for it. And, you know, I was lying to myself. But the truth is the truth. I do. I don't. I didn't want to say nothing about no black issues and stuff like that. Plus, I was trying to go in another direction. And then the Lord talking about do this. And I'm like, don't nobody want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, to be honest, too, with that, you know, uh, I remember when, uh, Oh, I got to stretch. Let me get out of here. A lot of times, I don't know where this is coming from, but it's coming out. A lot of times when you find following God, like uh, Paul and uh, I wasn't there with them anyway, but I feel their pain when Paul and Jonah and Elijah and all them, when they were going to do God's work, yeah, a lot of them was by themselves, but still, people don't know the isolation that you endure. People don't know the uncomfortableness. Thank you, Jesus. People don't know the uncomfortableness that you experience when you're walking with God. The frustration, the not knowing. Uh, there's loneliness. Uh, not being alone. Loneliness, you know. Um, it makes you take a drink. <laughs> I try to beat around the bush, but I'm telling you, like I said, man, back in the day, I would take a drink. I would hear guys talking to me when I was younger, and I, you know what I'm saying? And I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to hear that. Boy, they be killing people. And, you know, they cut Jolly Baptist's head off and all that type of thing running around the top. <laughs> you know? All right, man, I told y'all. I just got to encourage myself, but I'm going to tell y'all real time. Yeah, they run, run around. He's talking. and laughing. them talking. He running in caves from a woman. All she did was say she was going to kill him. And he done ran and he and I'm like, man, uh-uh. I wouldn't even be running around trying to talk up a guy. You know what I'm saying? That's stuff you better think about. All right, uh, then here I'm running around trying to say something about God and trying to tell people or suggest that people would do this, do that. Man, ain't nobody listening to me. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to hear that. People hate you. People bad. People, man. Uh, people don't want to hear that. People fight you for that. Don't nobody want to get out of the boat. <laughs> Reverend Williams had a sermon called Get Out of the Boat. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of the sermon again the other day was like that. You know, everybody stayed in the boat. Peter's the only one that came off the boat. You know, but the one that comes off the boat, 
and and do believe that's the one lots of time that gets the flat. Just like the pastor was saying, get on back over here, get in the boat. <laughs> you know, because a lot of people are like, you better get in this boat. Look at you, dumb. Now you're thinking. You know, so I don't know, man. I don't know. I just keep taking one step at a time, you know. Going in the dark where there ain't been no light, you know what I'm saying? That's my Langston Hughes favorite poem. I ain't lying, it just always, it just refreshes my spirit. You know, mother to son, and I always refresh my spirit. Uh, uh, I had a dream the other day, kind of like a bitch, and uh, it was a uh, name, and it was an old school friend. And so I reached out to her, found her on Facebook, and um, uh, she accepted my friend request, so I don't know what that was about, why God did that, and um. Uh, Attached to her was some more people that I grew up in from the East End. You know, she's a, uh, I went to school with her. And uh, she's a part of what I was thinking about. So I don't know, like I said, God does things. I don't tell her about because I don't want people, oh God, she's fit. No, I don't see no visions like that. I have dreams and a lot of the dreams I have to remember. You know, I listen to T.D. Jakes like when you have a dream, write it down. Don't, uh, you get a vision or something, hurry and write it down. Because it will pass, so I try to hurry and write it down. That's what Paul and all of them did. You hurry up and write things down, you know. Anyway, when I was talking about, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's bringing me back to a memory real quick. So, uh, I'm going to pull something up real quick and see if you remember the, okay, let me see. Uh, see if y'all remember this. i got to take my shoe off. Uh... Uh, when I remembered her, uh, uh, back in the day, they used to have the shows I was telling, uh, I was telling you about, and, uh, she sung, she blew my mind, I ha hadn't seen her for years, and, uh, she, uh, uh, let me bring the video back up, anyway, she sung a song. She, she sung. I went to the Black Expo, what it was. I went to the Black Expo they had downtown on 4th Street. And uh, they had the talent show. And when I went down there, uh, you know, I'm there getting my hair product. Because I had grabbed my little bag and they was giving out all the free uh, ultra sheen and all that tank, stuff in the tank. So I'm going down. And so then they said, uh, we're going to have a talent show. So I ran over and they was having. So I heard a couple people say some Luther, you know, and all of that. So then all of a sudden they introduced this chick. So she came out. And I was like, nah, it looked like somebody I went to school with. So she ended up singing. And I'm looking like, oh, my God. I mean, she got a beautiful voice. And I never knew she could sing. You know what I'm saying? Not really, really. I didn't, I didn't know she could sing. And she sung uh, Jennifer Holliday. Uh, I think it was, and I'm telling you. I think it was, yeah, at the time, I think it was, and I am telling you. And she hit every note beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say her name. But, uh, like I said, because I got to see what God's saying about that. So, you know, you don't know. It's a long story. But anyway, I see what God's going to do with that. But anyway, it's funny. I was talking about that, and the guy gave me a vision of her. And uh, she's doing professional something. You know, she's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? She's beautiful, and she's married, and everything. You know what I'm saying? It seems like a beautiful relationship. And uh, anyway, uh, she had fun. And so... Uh, like I said, I have been talking to you all about where, where uh, you know, the, like I said, one minute, I know y'all like, is she tripping? <laughs> one minute, she's like, yeah, uh, like uh, Paul said, I've learned to obey. If I get it and I don't and I don't and I do, whatever. You know, if I'm rich, I'm rich. I love him. If I'm poor, I'm poor. I love him. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I learn. To, uh, so whatever. Like I said, I want to do a whole lot of things, you know. Uh, I want to run, I want to hide, I don't want to do it, you know what I'm saying, uh, I want to go hang in the clubs, you know, I want to go do a lot of things, but uh, not my will, that will be done, uh, anyway, like I said, God's doing this, so I'm going to listen, if you want to listen, you can, if you don't, step away, back in the day, when they used to sing sound, black people used to get together, black people, black people, black people, black people, black people. Back in the day, what the 70s, probably the 70s, yeah, early 70s, 70s, 80s. And uh, anyway, uh, back in the day, you used to go over people's house. Black people 
black people, black people, black people. Black people used to go over to people's house. And, you know, if your mama go over, you go. And so you go over and you hang with whoever's over there, they kids and stuff. You, if you don't know them, you get to know them and you hang out. And they drinking, playing cards or whatever, and you and the friends, y'all figure out what y'all going to do. So anyway, mama and all my aunties, all of them, they went over this lady's house. She was kin to my auntie's, uh, my aunt Mamie's boyfriend. And so anyway, we went over there and uh, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, she was, I forgot her name. She was cool. She loved to dance and sing. And uh, she always wanted to be in talent shows. I think she had been in talent shows. I, I forget. I forget. I, I wonder what happened to her to this day. But uh, like I said, it kept, got put it on my mind. Anyway, we was over at Hassel, and Mama and was in there drinking and everything. We was up in Park Hill. She lived in Park Hill. And uh, we was over her house, and we up in the room, we playing and stuff like that. She's playing music. Like I said back then, you remember, we used to play the albums. Somebody play albums and stuff like that, and we sang. So anyway, see if y'all remember this sound and remember what we black people used to do when we got together. Okay. Sunshine when she Not that right there. That's a little commercial. I'm on YouTube. Okay, now she's gone. Y'all remember this? The persuader. Love's gonna pack up and walk out. Can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? We gotta get it together. Y'all remember this? But it used to go, love's gonna pack up and walk out on us. Remember? <laughs> y'all can't see me, you remember? Love's gonna pack up. And walk out on the love. Love's gonna pack up and walk out on the love. Y'all remember? Y'all remember? We acted like two kids and she used to do the little dance and we went through the whole little thing. She made up all of this to the sound. Look at that, still remember. Y'all remember that song? You get the sacrifice for me. Y'all remember that? I got to understand you. You got to understand me. Who no, whose fault is who? Y'all remember that? Love doing a pack up and walk out on me. Anyway, I can't think of her name, but that's the Persuaders. And uh, they also sung, There's a Thin Line Between Love and Hate. But uh, the point I'm making, back in the day, we used to uh, act out the song. You act out the song when you had little competitions with it. Oh, man. Uh, like I said, oh, man. <laughs> no way, for real. That was the day. Man, we used to have a lovely time. Our parents would be drinking and and, and 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 talking and they in there eventually dancing but we were in another room or we was upstairs and then later on we went outside and we competed with other friends of hers out there and stuff like that you know and her friends respected us because we was guests over her house you know oh man that's how we start meeting people we would meet people and that's how you made friends from a distance we live one place, but we would take and be in Park Hill over to her people's house that we just met. And then we would meet her and then I'd meet her brothers and her other sister or whatever. And then meet her friends that lived in Park Hill. So then we start making friends for life. So then later on, somewhere down the road, we run into each other. Oh, yeah, I remember you. I, you I think her name was Pat. 
I think her name was Pat. I think her name was Pat. Uh, you was over Pat's house. Oh, yeah, hi, how you doing? And then, from then on, yeah, man, black love, black relationships. Man, it was strong. It was strong back then. Man, uh, mm, I don't know. Lord just be taking me off some things. But uh, anyway, back then, you know, mm, you didn't put your hand. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, uh, <laughs> the black guy might pop you. <laughs> like I said, my mother's relationship was a little bad. But other than that, ah, man, you didn't, didn't nobody come up and abuse you. You know what I'm saying? Men protected the black woman. I was sitting in church next to this older lady, and she was sitting there. She wanted to, you know, oh, you don't know. But back in the day, the older women were like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I said it's stupid when people talk about you talking to yourself. It's ignorant. Back in the day, older people always talked to themselves because they were talking to God. Uh, they was remembering something that they went through that they came out of. And my auntie was that way. My aunt Kat was like that. She'd be talking to herself, but she'd be thanking and praising God. Mm -hmm, the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He watches over me and he keeps things like that. And the older lady was sitting next to me. And I wanted to lean and hug her and say that I was sorry. I wanted to tell her that I was sorry for forgetting what she been through and what she went through and what she's going through. You know what I'm saying? For us to be here. Lord Jesus, wow, how of this stuff, woo, where is this coming from? But I did. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do it, but I wanted to because I could hear her sitting there and she, as a pastor was preaching, you know, she didn't want to get loud with it. Because nowadays it's inappropriate to be loud. It's inappropriate to show how you feel about the Lord and express your emotions. So she's sitting there and she's humming, like I said, you know, and I was thinking that, you know. And uh, I remember in a day, man, you didn't, you better not put your hands on no older lady. I disrespect nobody older man or nothing like that. It was yes, sir, no, sir, whatever. Hey, you better not mess with Mrs. Jenkins. You better not mess with Mr. Tom. Uh-uh, now, nah, man, don't be talking to him like that. Plus, like I said, when I grew up, they can hit you. <laughs> so it wasn't none of that anyway. Shoot, I remember one time, uh, I think her name was it, Miss Sally. Uh, Miss Murr. I think her name was Miss Murr. When we lived at a 721 Ballacore Building 8, we lived over there. We had white people. That's why I said, too, man, it's a trip. But I had Mr. Brooks with Mr. Uh, 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 the Normans, all of them. We lived next to white people, you know what I'm saying? It was two sets over there. Miss Bonnie was next door. And uh, we had a single door. And Miss Bonnie and them had a double door. And Mr. Brooks and all of them, uh, the, they used to sell newspapers. They had a son, Tommy. He was slow. They lived across from us. A couple of more people, I won't blast their name out there. But we all lived there. Most of the people in the neighborhood, they was working people, you know, in the projects. That's why I said people try to stigmatize, put a stigma on people. You can't because, you know what I'm saying, I didn't see it. We had a model that lived across. She was tall. She was like six foot something. Beautiful. She had a little daughter named Crystal. She was beautiful. Uh, mm, she was gorgeous. She went to the top. He used to always try to fight all the time until she pulled out a little pistol, and it was like over. <laughs> but, so we had a lot of people there, but Miss Murray, she lived at the end. She always groomed her yard, and I don't know what I said. I did something. Boy, she hurried up. She whacked at me, and uh, <laughs> she hit at me or something. I don't know what we was doing. All I know is she ended up telling mom, and I was playing it out. She said, nah. I said, nah. She said, oh, yes, yeah, she did. Uh -uh, don't you do it no more. Like I said, when we rode, was raised, man, now, nah, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You know, is your mama home? <laughs> when they ask you if your mama home, you know, you don't want to say yeah. Because when they ask you if your mama home, they can tell something they seen. Yeah. Did your mama home? I don't think she home. Yeah, is your mama home? What time she going to be home? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, man, that was beautiful. It was beautiful. Like I said, I thank God for whipping. I thank God for whipping. And I still remember when Mama hit me with that race car track. Man, it left a whip on my leg. It looked like a train getting ready to go across my leg one time. But I thank God for it. it. Made me a better person. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. I'm not rich. I'm not uh, 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 Rockefeller and all this type of thing. I don't have my clothes handmade. Ooh, but I would love to. But uh, I've never been to Paris. You know what I'm saying? But I've been out of Louisville. You know what I'm saying? I thank God for that. You know what I'm saying? I've had transportation in my life. You know what I'm saying? I've had some fine things in my life. You know what I'm saying? 
I've had some joy. I had more joy than I've had sadness in my life. You know, I've, I've experienced so many things in life, and I, I have so many things to be thankful for. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, got my children, got my grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've got a roof over my head right now. <laughs> I got food to eat. You know, I had me some little pot stickers yesterday. Oh, I'm telling tell myself, I fried me some chicken, the little chicken in the leg. Oh, my God, that was delicious. <laughs> I did myself. I was turned up. Oh, my God, I had that. It's a little pot stickers. They like little vegetable wontons or something. I had that, you know. And for breakfast today, I had me some applesauce and uh, 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 some of the little toaster strudels. So I uh, had me a glass of pop. So, hey, like I said, life's good. I don't eat a whole, whole lot anyway. So I'm thankful. You know, anything I want to eat, I thank God I have an opportunity to have enough money to eat. You know, all my bills are paid. You know what I'm saying? God's grace and His mercy. His grace and His mercy is so wonderful. And I thank Him. You know, I thank Him. You know, like I said, sometimes I want to stay and other times I want to go. And the world just seems like... Um, let me just be open with you for real. Walking with God is a beautiful thing, but it's difficult. I'm not going to tell you, and I doubt if anybody ever sits back and tell you. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking with him, and I can't sit back and somebody, I'm quite sure people say, well, aren't you walking with God? Why are you worrying about you? Be worrying about that. That's walking with God. I don't know. Ask him. I don't want to ask him. That's why I'm trying to figure it out. But uh, I've seen him take care of me when I've seen the supernatural. I've seen it done numerous times, you know, and uh, so I keep on walking because I know him. I've seen him show up and show out just like he did yesterday. I got some money in the mail, and I'm like, you know, I'm steady praying. Oh, please, God, let some money be in her. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I, I'm thankful, you know what I'm saying? You know, and uh, sometimes I'm, I'm learning with him. Sometimes he hold, he withholds things from me sometimes just to see what I'm going to do. You know, and uh, thank God I must have passed that test. <laughs> uh, yesterday I went downtown because I'm changing my business name. And you wouldn't believe the stuff I'm going through. I'm trying to change it in both uh, areas and I'm catching stuff. And so I don't know. So I'm going to try to go out here today and figure out what's wrong and try to change it that way and mail it in because the computer don't want to take it. But I know the devil gets busy. Uh, so it was suggested to me to change the name of my business and so I'm trying to follow through uh, God willing uh, so uh, while I was downtown at the bank and the lady's talking to me and she's smiling why I get a ticket and I'm sitting telling her I'm like look right there get me a ticket and she said no you know next time you can park over here and all that I'm thinking like next time nothing I'm talking about now and she just got long-winded with it. You know what I'm saying? And God's grace and mercy, I was supposed to have a certain amount. This is how God shows up and shows out. You were supposed to be able to put something in her. I didn't have much to put in her. So she let me get away with it and it set me up and everything. So God bless her heart and all her part. But yeah, I got a $15 ticket. I was like, mm. but thank God this time it seemed legit. Which I didn't think I was in there no 30 minutes. Anyway, so it said time expired on the meter. You know, because y'all know me, because I'll be ready to, because mm, I tried fighting before and she already made up her mind. That's why I tell people, when you park, make sure you are actually bad at me. If not, that's how they take and get you, give you those tickets. Then I know everybody got to make a living, but that's, mm, that job right there is something else. Especially if you wrong, you got people to back you up when they wrong. So make sure that if you park. I always pull up that where you're the only meter there, and if it's a double meter, make sure that you are by that accurate meter. If not, you will get a ticket. Warning, warning. And when you go for the little hearing, which is in a little parking lot, it was a woman there. She's already justified and feel that she's a, a, a judge and jury anyway on it. She don't want to give you money, so it's very hard fighting them. But that's why they got food down at the waterfront where they didn't pay some bills down there. So anyway... Just be careful where you park downtown or anywhere in Louisville, as a matter of fact, because they will give you a ticket, even if it's like one minute, 
They'll stand there and wait for that woman. And yes, I said it. You will stand there because how you going to give somebody a ticket at 201? Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, that's the thing too with me. I get tired, man. I'm always in a position, and I be like, hey, look, I don't even want to fight this. And that's like with the job. I'm like, hey, man, I'm tired. I need this money. I need this job. I need these health benefits. I ain't even trying to fight you, man. I'm like, I ain't even say nothing to do. And I'm like, every time I look around, the more I didn't say nothing to him, the more he kept running up in my face, the aggressor. So I'm like, still, what did I do? You know what I'm saying? I don't even understand where my part in it. What did I do? I don't even know what I did wrong in it. Maybe, like I said, I didn't do nothing wrong. So what guy got to tell me about that, I don't know. I don't know, you know. But I did my best. I stood my ground. I didn't quit. I did not quit. It was in me. Every opportunity came up. The car broke down. The buses. I would have had to catch two buses. Really, was going to Uber there. Thank God my kids took me twice on two occasions to one bus stop because you got to catch two buses from where I live to get there which really would have consumed my whole day. But anyway, I needed the money, so I did what I had to do because there were no other doors over here opening up. So, hmm, that's what it be like walking with the Lord. <laughs> but every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Uh, thank God for dreams and visions. Sometimes I look back on my life and I think about if I never had a dream and if I never had a vision, where would my life be? And I think about reality probably would be dead. Because I used to drink and I used to drive and I used to run the streets and I would get in crazy relationships and had a lot of enemies. <laughs> Woo, there go that nervous hand clap. Yeah. I had some male enemies and still got them for real. Yeah, yeah, I still be watching my back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Every breakup wasn't friendly. <laughs> Woo, yeah. So, yeah, I think about it, you know. I used to have them flat tires. That's why I can't let this go. Okay, yeah, the tire's flat. Maybe it really was all along. She been messing with my kind tires. You know you're doing dirt. But, uh, like I said, you know, where would I be if Jesus didn't love me? Where would I be if Jesus didn't care? Where would I be if he didn't sacrifice for me? But oh, I'm so glad he did. Uh, it's weird how it is. Sometimes I want to throw my hands up. I want to give up and I want to jump in the world. That's what I was going to speak on earlier. The world be calling you because the world be looking good. You know what I'm saying? People be sipping on cognac and they showing all these pretty bottle Hennessy mark down. You know, uh, 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 new fruity drinks coming out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I go for a pop sometimes at the store and you look at all this beer. You know what I'm saying? Pop is more than a bottle or a can of beer. You know, and you looking at it and it's like, man, I think of, I reminisce for a brief moment like, wow, man, I remember back in the day. Man, if I give me like a six pack of Coronas and a land, oh man, I'll be right. I'll be mellow. You know, and then as soon as that thought hits me, then I think about, okay, yeah, you know. But what if I take that one, then I want more. You know what I'm saying? You can't drink and drive, that's illegal, you know, to the capacity that I would be drinking and driving. <laughs> it would be illegal. You know, blind drinking, you know what I'm saying? I'm blind drunk. I'm one of them blind drunks, you know what I'm saying? And then you get drunk and then what? You make a fool of yourself or you humiliate yourself or you do some things with some people or do some things to some people that you didn't even want to do. You let the liquor or, or alcoholic beverage or some drug control you. Nah, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. You know, I don't want to be there. I don't want to do that. But the world be calling, you know what I'm saying? The world, that's the world, the things of the world, you know, enticing you. Hey, why don't you go hurt? I got a friend, you know, this dude, when my car was in here, gave me a ride. The one that introduced me to the dude that charged me the $300 and required my car. He meant well, though, but yeah. Him, he always wants me to go out to this little club, you know. And it's, I heard it's pretty a nice, a nice club. Before I stopped drinking, I had went there. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? Older crowd of people, you know, around my age, a little older. You know, set back, laid back, you know what I'm saying? But 
he said he goes down he sings karaoke so he wanted me to come out and hear it and uh yeah it crossed my mind he's introduced into, uh, uh asked me there and he asked me for another club that's an old club you know i'm curious i got curiosity i'm human you know and then i just think about it and i would like to go for one thing, he used to be talking about 11 o'clock at night and all that. So I'm not with all that running in the streets at night it's by myself anyway. But uh, I just think about those things, you know. And then, like I said, you know, uh, don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? There's places and things I could do and places I could go. And, and, and if I want to take a drink, I could take a drink. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I just think about the consequences. You know, I always try to think about the consequences. I don't tell nobody, you know, don't tell nobody don't drink and uh, drugs. You know what I'm saying? Drugs is really a big thing, but really alcohol is considered a drug for real, for real. Uh, it can be anything you can do under the influence of that, pretty much you can do under the influence of anything else. People kill people under the influence of alcohol, the same thing with drug, crack, heroin. <laughs> my daughter say, oh my God, mom, it's not heroin, <laughs> it's heroin, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, you know, anything. Some people don't have nothing in them and kill you. Uh, okay, but um, yeah, the world be calling. Now, what you want to do? Why don't you do this? You know, and that devil too. Ah, oh, you know you unhappy. I heard somebody talking or uh, uh, preaching. I forget what it was. They were saying, uh, stop doing. Uh, T D Jakes was preaching a sermon, and he was talking about uh, don't keep going to church and just doing church and working all that. Find you some outside activities. Join something else. You know, when woo woo this, and I was like, well, yeah, you know, that's cool. You know, I sounds good to participate in other things. If it's available to you, you know, like I said, I tried to. I joined a lot of different organizations. You know, I tell a lady on Facebook, she was talking about the same thing I've been talking about. She was talking about black people uh, standing up for themselves and this or that. And she was saying, join an organization. I'm like, I joined an organization. But the truth of the matter is, when you tell people to join an organization, people need to review that organization. Don't just join anything. Don't run out here and join something. You fool around, join the Ku Klux Klan. They don't see your face. You got to be careful what you join. Or you join some type of witchcraft group or something. So you have to really be careful. Research on anything that you join. She didn't add that. I don't care if you're black, white, whatever color you are. Research whatever you join because your name is important. Your name is you. Who you are. It's identified with you as an individual. So be very careful when you do that. Especially with social media nowadays. Because people can take your name and associate it with anything. So be very careful about what you're saying and attach your name to. Because it is you. But uh, like I uh, said to her. I joined a poor people's coalition. And the woman, to be honest with you, the stuff she's talking about. I said, well, tell me how I can help. You know what I'm saying? How I can help and start something here. You know what I'm saying? She write me back talking about some bull, you know, showing her title or something like that. I don't want to hear that, you know, and that's the point I'm making. I'm not knocking nobody do you, but at the same time, don't come talking you all liberal and you all for civil rights and you all for activism and you all for this and black people and all this type of thing. As a matter of fact, she's a white woman. She might have something else in her, but she's a white lady. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm saying is this. You know, if I ask you something in email, you know, I'm quite sure you get it because when you read me back, you said my name. But my thing is, I'm asking you how I can help with something. You coming back to me with something else. So what you really about? So, yeah. So uh, be very careful on what you join, you know, because joining something don't mean anything. Like the lady Dorian said, be, be active in it. Whatever you join, be acting. Like I said, I want to participate. You in somewhere else. What can I do here? What where, where do I join here? What do I do here? Well, what what is going on? What type of activism is going on here? What type of civil rights organizations are available for me to join here that are being active? I mean, that's that's what the issue is. You know, that's what needs to be discussed. Uh, she's talking about people talking. Yeah, people talking, but. You know, who's walking? <laughs> who's walking the top? So, uh, like I said, I'm going to get out here and go out here and jump into this world. And, uh, like I said, uh, just keep your head up and be real and be true to who you are. Uh, go after your dreams. Go after your vision. And, uh, like I said, uh, uh, I'm at a point in my life where I have to go find some people to be encouraged. 
then try to encourage other people. I can't just be selfish and just want somebody to encourage me. Sometimes I got to go do an act for somebody else, do something for somebody else. Often I do, and I feel better about myself. You know what I'm saying? I feel better about the position that I'm in. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys telling me to tell this too. I don't want to go to that job tomorrow. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't want to go to that job tomorrow. I don't even know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what it's about. She's talking one thing and then she keep coming up with changes. I don't know. God might at the last minute say don't go. Then I got to figure out how I'm going to pay bills. Like I said, it's just always uh, obstacles. You know what I'm saying? It's always some change. You know, just quick change. You know what I'm saying? And um, But uh, I go. You know, I go. You know, I plan on going. You know, it's, it's, it's a job they got to rely on their car. I guarantee you that. It has to rely on that car, and, you know, so. It is what it is, you know what I'm saying? It don't pay what the other job paid, but in reality, really, I'm at the same area, <laughs> to be honest. I'm about at the same place, uh, you know. Um, when you add up what you're doing to travel back and forth, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh. I see. I don't know what God has planned. I don't know why he opened this door and he closed that door. I don't know why. I just keep moving. You know, it's not a pleasant thing not to know what, what what's going on with your life. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, yay over here. God's saying no over there. So, oh, one day at a time. One day at a time. That's all I can do. So it's going on 12. Let me jump on out here and go do something. Uh, yeah, like I said, um, I don't know. But God bless you and keep you. That was my phone reading messages. I don't know God's timing of everything. I'm going to go try to find out what's going on uh, with uh, trying to change the name of the organization from Vigilante uh, for Jesus. Try to change that um, and uh, take it from there. And then I got other things. Uh, bill collectors calling. <laughs> bill collectors calling my phone and I want to tell them I'm not home. <laughs> Be dodging telephone calls, you know. Shoot. Yeah. So uh, God bless you and keep you and have a wonderful, marvelous, fantastic day.